Hello, Cyclocross friends, and welcome to another episode of Cyclocross Radio. It's 137, and on today's show is another TDD TIE with Scott Dienbach and Mr. David Palin. They don't do that in Europe, and today we are talking about the World Cup Cyclocross race that happened in Hoogerheide in the Netherlands, and then we are following that up with our World Championship picks. We're going to pick the men's elite women's elite u23 races getting a good discussion about that especially based on what we saw in huger Haida and really just uh getting ready for that world championship week i'd love for you all to follow along with the content that i will be creating from denmark and you can do that at cxairs.com also on my youtube channel which is cyclocrosstelevision.com or you can go to youtube.com slash cxhairs. Just hit the subscribe button there uh, and then you can follow along with all of the interviews and highlights that we will have from the world championships. Wide Angle Podium Podcast Network. That's the only other thing I need to make sure that you all are aware of and I'm sure you are if you've been listening to this show but you can also check out the other great shows we have like Bike Shop CX that's run by David and Scott who will be uh, joining in with in just a minute here and also the Slow Ride Podcast I was able to jump in there and do a little guest stint with them for their cyclocross picks and that was fun I love that show and I think you all should uh, download it and check it out The Gravel Lot if you don't like just straight up bike racing go check out The Gravel Lot just the 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 varied guests that they've had on that show have been really great it's uh, it's engaging and one that you will want to get into and become a pebble as they say and along with that consummate athletes still just putting out the, the, the most diverse uh, content we have on the network you can go to wideanglepodium.com become a member five dollars a month ten dollars a month on up or if you just want to do a one-time donation that works as as well when you're there you can buy some coffee from grimper brothers coffee they are one of our partners and yeah we'd love to have you part of the family we're continuing to grow that network and we want you to be part of it okay that's it Hey, if you got any questions for me, feedback at cxhairs.com. Also, hit me up on Twitter and on Instagram at cxhairs. I'm off to Denmark tomorrow. Going to be checking in with you guys from there. It's going to be an awesome trip. Really looking forward to it. But before we do that, we have to do this. TDD, TIE, Scott Dienbach, he's going to be leading the show, and he's going to do that right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another edition of They Don't Do That in Europe, TDD TIE with me, Scott Diedenbach. As always, sitting center square, mustache and all, <laughs> Mr. David Pallon. <laughs> mustache yeah, well, and I all. say that because your your logo has a mustache now. So I know. And as, so does Mr. David do Pallon now. Yeah. <laughs> there we and go. And flying over our heads as, you know, keeping an eye on everything, Bill Scheiken. Hey there. Do you notice that David, at least on my screen, and maybe it's just because he's in the the middle, he he pulsates. So I can sort of <laughs> pulsate. No, oh. he doesn't. It doesn't Whoa. happen on on mine. Right. Oh no! Wait, there it goes. Yes. Yeah. I think it depends on Man. who's talking. No, David, your plan Probably. is working. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing, but your plan is working. <laughs> All right. So, guys, we're here to. <laughs> Talk about the last the World Cup uh, series is over for the season. Did any are you guys feeling you know? Did you get through it okay? You know, no, no depression or I'm okay. My legs are a little tired. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad I took that. I'm glad I took those couple weeks off so I can come in strong for uh, the the finale and then also you know prep for Worlds. Right, right. The goal. The well, goal. Of course, the, the goal is just to not get sick in the next couple days. Right, so that you can be ready for Worlds. Yeah, yeah you're going to be dealing with jet lag at Worlds. Yeah. Hmm. Nah. Bill, Bill leaves in, what, a little over 24 hours from yeah. now? Yeah. Um, and that was, of course, the Hooger Hyde race. So we're going to go over the results of that. And then this is the big show where we make our, our famous... Everybody, you know, waits to lay down their bet until after we make our picks. Exactly. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, I oh, mean, for sure. Yeah. I think that's known. In fact, all of Europe is waiting, too. Yeah. You know, so. I, I know the slow ride guys have been waiting for us, too. <laughs> uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to get through that. Um, 
as usual, and we're going to make a little bit different. We're going to make a dark horse pick this year, so we're going to do our top three, uh, and then for the elites, we're going to make dark, cor- dark horse picks. So there you go. But first, are you guys ready to talk about Huga Haida? I think Before in we general, talk about Huga Haida, yeah? sorry to, to interrupt there, but uh, I have to tell you that, especially after our last show of the Bike Shop CX, I noticed you're mm-hmm. a lot calmer this morning. Were you drinking decaf? What's what's in your <laughs> coffee cup this morning, Scotty B? No, I've, I've I've instead of three cups, I've only had two cups. That's okay. the big. That's two the cups difference. of. Two cups of. Uh, I had um, the full schleck today. All so right, the full schleck. Myself, I I figured we're doing TDD TIE. I had to go with hello cyclocross friends this morning and Bill. <laughs> Oh, so here's here's my dilemma, and you know, I talked to Dan from uh, Grimper Brothers because I I, I had this uh, Instagram like story of both of my my bags in the trash already, and I flew through them, and I was supposed to save some to take to Worlds with me. And him being the great guy, he was like, "Hey, when are you leaving? I can send you out some more." But of course, there wasn't <sighs> time, so I just like blasted through the Hello Cyclocross friends and the full schleck. And um, I, I need to head over to wideanglepodium.com and just click on the Grimper Brothers uh, coffee uh, logo over there on the right-hand side and uh, order some more. Ooh. There you go. Going to Europe if, without coffee. Yeah, well, I'll... I'll and I'll, after I'll our last to, show. I'll have to get some. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say without, but it'll it'll be substandard. It won't be up to up to what <laughs> I'm used to from from our friends there at uh, Grimper Brothers. I was going to say, right. I think they probably have coffee in Europe somewhere. So, but yeah, it's not, it's not, not as all, good. It's, it's, it's not, not it's, as good. No. It's not all going to be uh, um, pickled herring. And uh, <laughs> whatever else they eat in Denmark, oh, but it's not, it is not going to be the full schleck unless you grab some before you get over there for sure. And for people that are listening, that listen to Bike Shop CX, we are actually they got to get in because we have a contest. You can win three. Get this, Bill. Three people are going to win a bag of either the full schleck or Hello Cyclocross friends. Whoa. Free. Wow. Free. Dan's going to just send it to him. I'm going to. Got- what I am doing after we are done recording this is I'm going to. Is that up? Is that episode up? That episode that's is up. That's the last episode. Okay. Yep, well, up. I will. It's in my queue. I, I am going to listen to that. And that, wait, are, 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 are uh, family members and employees of the Wide Angle Podium <laughs> uh, eligible to, to play? I don't know. We didn't. We, we didn't, didn't say stip- stipulate, stipulate there. that. Yeah. But Bike Shop CX podcasters are not so okay <laughs> so you still you're still in the running i, I think i'll have to yeah. find a i'll have to find a proxy there you <laughs> go there you go and then yeah he's dan's completing the wide angle podium by uh giving fourth and fifth place uh some of his t-shirts so there you go fantastic how cool is that that's great that's awesome so if you want to try that yeah get over at grimpoorbrothers.com or wide angle podium click on the link buy some coffee it supports the shows so there you go yeah. All right. And, and follow Grimper Specialty Coffees, Grimper Brothers Specialty Coffees. I think it's a really long name, but that's what they uh, Dan is on uh, Instagram, and he's always got some good cycling, cycling related, oh. related <laughs> gifts and content on that Instagram feed. So he's killing the there. gravel personally. Yeah, that's the thing, man. I mean, you're supporting someone in a company that just loves and supports cyclocross, the sport we all love. So, you know. Just go over and do it. You'll you won't be disappointed. So, all right. Yeah, are we ready to talk about Huger Haida? We are. So this, I thought there was some interesting stuff hap- that happened in this race that you know kind of makes a little bit of uh, interest going into Worlds only one weekend out. Did you guys oh, think yeah. the same? I mean, yeah, I for think. Sure. I think that after this race, and um, you, you know, looking looking at at my picks that I hadn't made yet for worlds, it it completely changed what I am going to make by the time that you say I'm up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there was some definitely uh, you know, and so well, all right, let's just let's get let's start getting let's get results into it. and we'll talk about it as we go. Yeah. So we'll do the uh we're gonna do the um the juniors first. Sure. Since we have the junior results up there. So in first place for the juniors was Witsy Musin. In first place. Second place was Carlos Canal Blanco from Spain. Third place, Lenert Bellmans. Fourth place, Ryan 
Korchens in fifth place. Tom Lindner from in Germany. Sixth place. So, Go ahead, just, tell us sixth place. Yeah, yeah, just do it now. Sixth place was Alex Morton. Nice. And he told me that for a while he was actually in the group that was the four, five, and six group, and he was in fourth about ten seconds off the podium at one point in the race, and then uh, well, just was wasn't able to. I mean, still, that still him. finishing within a stone's throw. I mean, eleven seconds off of yeah. uh, fourth place. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, and and beating beating some names. I mean, beating Pim there in uh, seventh place. Yep. Uh, yep. You, you know, we, we look at, um, well, it, kind of in not to I don't, it, look at the bib numbers. Yeah. Yeah, look at Carlos Tanel Blanco. I mean, you talk about <laughs> right. guys we didn't really have on our radar. Yeah, he was no, basically back 60. of the field. Yeah, yeah, and Tom yeah. Lindner too. Same thing. Forty-five. There's Fifty-eight is fifty-eight finishers, and he was bib number sixty. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he finished in second place. That is, that is some good perspective right place. there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, all right. Other U.S. riders in this race, uh, or and 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 Canadian riders, right? Uh, in 29th place was Nick Carter, and in 34th place was Jared Scott. And who else? I got to switch over to page two here. Uh, 41st place was Strohmeyer, Andrew Strohmeyer, and in 43rd place, Lucas Steerwald. Very cool. Uh, yeah, Lucas yeah. in his first ever World Cup. Yeah, yeah. So, not bad, not bad. I think so. He's, we, this, he says he was bib number twenty six, but he said he was. I talked to, or I saw him on on his Instagram, and I sent him a text, but we didn't talk about this. And he said um, that he was the forty third call up, and finished forty third. So, but he had bib number twenty six. I don't. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. So anyways, he was just happy. He's like, hey, I didn't I didn't gain anything, but nobody, I didn't, you know, I finished right where I started. So he was pretty happy with that with his first ever World Cup. So well done, Lucas. Uh, do we know what happened to Ben Tullett? I do not know what happened to him. I was just he, checking his Instagram. Hey, he and he 35th. Doesn't, yeah, he doesn't say yeah, anything Yeah, he doesn't. It. He must have had some crash or mechanical Some kind or of something issue. i mean yeah. that's coming in with you know your your world champion with the uh number one bib and uh finishing that far down something must exactly. have gone, have gone wrong there and tupelik back there too tupelik was in 34th place uh 33rd place yeah 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 saving themselves so anyways, maybe a little bit for next week maybe who knows well that's also also i mean we haven't really talked about it that that hooger hide track holy cow yeah. Oh, isn't that amazing? amazing. Is that off camber? Amazing. It the terraced you know, off Hooger, camber. Hooger Haida, <laughs> if you look at it, is this this uh, construction zone? Then they're building. They've built a lot of new apartments now. But just over the years, you've it's it's sort of shifted to move around that ongoing construction. I think it was like three or four years ago. It went through a lot of it, and it was kind of a boring race. It was just really. Just this long stretches before you got to that stair staircase to nowhere. But this year, just these big, muddy, rutted off cambers with. I have you ever seen such distinct high, higher lines than on that that right to left <laughs> off camber? That rutted one. Yeah, that was crazy. No, no I was mean that crazy. was like that was like the ruts of Namur, except. Fifty feet in the air and steeper. I swear, steeper. They're they're <laughs> right. like dramatically exactly. steeper. They're like Billy Goat uh, paths up there. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You're expecting you like videos that uh, Red Bull puts out of these guys on the sides of mountains. Yeah, like rampage. <laughs> right. I mean, if you chose that high groove and then got to the top and did that left turn and did that drop, I mean, you were coming down from way up. Uh, you know, with tons of speed through there. So, man, oh, man. Yeah, I, I just thought overall it was a great, great course. I, I like, I really like the parts. You know, a lot of times I'm not a huge fan of sort of the, the, um, the, the large intestines courses that just sort of snake Squiggle back. Around. Yeah, just back yeah. and forth and back and forth and just these long 180s. But for this, it came, it was such like this this time of respite in, in the track, and it really 
you could be on the third one and see, look to your right and see what, like 15 seconds behind you. I mean, it was that right. yeah, big yeah. of a gap with those speeds. That was really neat that you could really just, it, it gave such a sense of, of place for where the race was, you know, especially when we, uh -huh. we had, um, well, in the women's race it happened, but then also in, in the men's elite race, which we'll talk about just being able to see those gaps. It was, I, I, I just, yeah. And, and, the uh, I think they upgraded the, the boom cameras and everything else, just the production of that race. I, I thought mm -hmm. may, may be the, maybe the best of, of the world cups this year. And we haven't even mentioned the stairs, oh, which yeah. were epic. Oh. Dude, that Epic nobody, stairs. I mean, maybe I missed it. I didn't see, I would have tripped at least one every time up there. Every I just, stair. I, mean, I would have tripped once every stair, I think. Yeah, and <laughs> and it was just the, you could see, I mean, if you wanted to nerd out on it, it was the, you know, who was taking two steps, who was taking one step. There were people, yep. and you would see it, and it'd be this weird, like, two, two, one, two, two, but they would keep the same pattern like they had it yeah. in their head they were sort of stamping out this different rhythm up it at, but mm -hmm. with sort of jagged choices for one versus two it was just yeah and it's so long do we know how many steps it was somebody will tell us no, no i bet we'll it was, get that tweet i bet it was two stories worth of steps oh, yeah. right yeah 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 at least at charms least. yeah somebody charm will, city esque yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. It was, <laughs> but it was a little bit steeper, right? I, yeah. I think. I think I'll bet it was more than, long, I'll bet it was more length, than, but. Well, that was 29 steps and it seemed like forever. I'll bet this was. This was more, more. than that, I would bet. Yeah. 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 All right. So, um, yeah, let's move on. Unless you guys have anything else for the juniors, nope. we can move on to the U23s. Uh, results for the top five in the U23 race. First place, this is men's U23, by the way. First place was Eli Ezerbeat. Second place, and how do I say it, David? Antoine Benoit. Benoit. Be Benoist. Benoit. Benoit. Yeah. Benoit. And second, third place was Ben Turner. Fourth place, Jakob Doragoni. Uh, and in fifth place, Niels Van de Puta. I think I may now have to put an explicit uh, tag on this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know that's wrong. But anyways, there's the top five. Uh, for the U.S. U.S. Riders' top uh, U.S. finisher was Spencer Petroff in 13th or in place. Or in seventh I'm place, sorry. Gage Hecht. Whoop. Seventh place was Gage Hecht. I knew that. Uh, and in 13th place was, so he was the top American. 13th place was Spencer Petroff. Uh, 20th place was Lance Hadett. And 29th place was Brandon Fix. And 38th place was Sam Noel. And oh, Cooper 41st Wilsey. place was Tyler Orsh Orshell from, Can from Canada. <laughs> um, and in 43rd place was Gunnar Holmgren from Canada. And in 44th place was Cooper Wilsey. So there we go. Um, comments, questions? Anything uh, you guys want to say Gage about that? Hecht, you know, 30 seconds off of the podium. So looking yep. really good going into into worlds. I uh, we I I I personally I will I will uh, uh, absolve you two from this because it was me and David actually um, was the first to uh, object to my um, downplaying of Ellie Ezerbeet's season. We did get a letter explaining the results that Ellie did get this year and also the mechanicals that he suffered in, I believe it was Poncha too, or the, the race that he, we, I didn't think that he performed the way that he should be performing. And uh, this, this kind of proves it that, that, uh, easier beat is, um, is right up there and definitely, yeah, right. uh, one, we'll one worth, what, uh, we're looking at. One of us might pick him then. <laughs> Where was, um, <laughs> did I miss this? What happened to Pitcock? Uh, I, he sat, he was in his basement doing a, uh, turbo training. Okay, so he just didn't. Yeah, he didn't I didn't make think he was. He he God. wasn't. Yeah. No, no. He won yeah. the World Cup while at home in his basement. That's. <laughs> hey, that was the same. Uh, Nikki Terpstra on Strava. That was that was his workout too. Was watching the uh, was twenty twenty eight miles go. watching the uh, Hooger Heide World Cup. <laughs> nice. Uh, all right, um, U twenty three. Anything else we want to mention? I think that's got it covered. I I think Gage is riding well and looked and looks good. So. 
All right, let's move on to the women's race that we all got to watch. Um, we'll give the top five for the elite women. In first place was Lucinda Brand. Second place, Katie Compton. Third place, Mariana Voss. Fourth place, Sonic Kant. Fifth place, Nikki Bramier. Continuing on to finish off the Americans in sixth place was Katie Keogh. Uh, in 18th place, Rebecca Farringer. In 19th place, Clara Hansinger. And in 27th place was Courtney McFadden, finishing out her season. Tw- 36th place, Katie Klaus. And who's left? Uh, da, 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 da. In 46th place was uh, Madigan Monroe. In 47th place was Ellie Anderson. In 51st place was Ellen Noble, and in 56th place was Sammy Runnels. And I'm sure, I think that, yeah, that's all of it. So, uh, 57th was uh, Magdalene Valliers Mill from the Canadian side. Yes. And I, I didn't mention it. the Canadians. I forgot already, Bill. I'm sorry. That's okay. Oh, and Ruby uh, West. Ruby West also, <laughs> 48th. Yeah, there and Magli Rochette, DNF. She, uh, you know, been sick a lot lately, really, um, you know, came into the beginning of the season so fast and just has been struggling lately and thought she was over it, had done some training camps and thought she was coming to this fine and then just was uh, once again feeling it once she started so she didn't finish and, you know, hopefully we'll get yeah, also in there. there. Yeah. Also in that category, Laura Vodonshaw didn't start. Yeah. I understand yeah. she warmed up, um, did not have what she needed, and um, decided it's that smart. it would be better to take it off, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, world's mm-hmm. around the corner. Smart. Uh, special, I think, you know, you really need to uh, just shout out to Maddie Monroe, uh, the uh, racing age 17. I think she's still 16. First time in Europe, first time racing in a World Cup. Said she was, I uh, heard um, uh, Meredith Miller, I think, on her stories had, had a pretty pretty nice. big interview with her and just uh yeah definitely uh a little freaked out in the beginning you know and definitely a little <laughs> bit intimidated she said even though she got a good start but after that it sort of found her groove and was able to to work in there and she's uh you know that's a top 50 in that field that's a that's and finishing that's a legit that's a legit finish yeah, and Absolutely. the experience that these young women get by doing this is amazing and that's going to that's going to go far. It's going to go far in her racing and, and also just in the personal development that these young riders are getting by doing yeah, these and, things is really kind of cool. And honestly, if you if you look at where she finished, she's and it, we we're all singing the praises of Harriet Harnon. She's just up the road, you know, in 41st. So right. so, so right yep, in yep. that in that group as well. So right where she needs to be for for those uh, U23 racers. And, so, and less. I mean, honestly, if we had a women's junior, that's what we'd be looking at with those two. Yeah. So at the beginning part of the show, we mentioned a lot of interesting things uh, that happened uh, to, to kind of change our view of stuff as we go into Worlds. What kind of stuff did you guys think happened in this in the women's race that made you go, hmm, about Worlds? I'm gonna, I, I'll start I, it out. One, I, I, I think you start the, performance out, of, the performance of Katie Compton. Yeah. Right, we kind of so were great. like Katie, so not great. having, not having the greatest year. We're kind of like, oh, what's going on with Katie? Da, da. And now a week, a week up from Worlds, she comes out and just blows the doors off, getting second place, and looked incredible. I mean, just looked really strong. Those, those last couple laps where she's just picking people off left oh. and right, and then you know, like Sonic Cut. See you later, Mariana Voss. Yep. See you later. See ya. And then yeah. even, I mean, heck, I, I, I'm not taking anything away from Brand because she had an amazing race. We'll talk yes. about it. But you're thinking, oh, yes. one more lap, and what's Katie gonna do? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, when she caught the back of that first group, I thought at the end of the second lap, I thought, all right, she can, she can maybe just sit in the third lap and then attack again on the fourth lap, and she might get on the podium and stuff. No. She just kept going, just kept picking them off all through the third lap, all the way into the fourth lap. I mean, it was just she was it was just an incredible ride by her. So, yeah, I think that's one and, of those things that you go, hmm. Yeah. And it was the question what, I have is, where, where was she at the beginning? Did she have a, another bad start? Was there something else going on or is it just well, the, the diesel row. experience? Well, second row. Yes. 
Yeah, but, but I mean, she, she didn't start on the front row. She had a second yeah. row start. She got a, an okay start. Not, I wouldn't call it a great start, but was you know a little bit off that first group for the first for the first lap, and then just kind of started laying down the watts and 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 picking people off. So, yeah. Here, what were you going to say? I, well, I was just saying the one thing that I <clears throat> I would say that when she is on a bike, uh, either pedaling or descending you cannot th- th- question any of her skills i think the one thing that always made me nervous was those stairs with katie uh and those and, barriers were really high yeah too. not only the barriers <laughs> but just the just the long haul up all of those stairs you that is where you know she would gap like sane yeah before mm-hmm. that and then yeah. that's where she would uh, Kant would always like close it back down yeah. And that that's what always meant. I was like, oh god, don't let her, don't let her, don't let her pass you <laughs> on those steps. Don't let her get back on the set. And even right. Boss was the same way. But so I think even beyond what she did, that she was sort of giving up that section, that that just sort of proves how much better she was on the rest of that course. Yeah, and yeah. I think you know when we come into the, worlds, it's similar. You know that that one track of the is with, similar. Yeah. One of the things ahead, with um, with Katie is she ri- rides and races so smart and, and methodical. And going up those stairs, especially when she's in front of Kant or Voss, they, they put on a burst and they can catch her. And maybe she could have gone up those stairs faster. I don't know. But I honestly think that she's thinking, stay within myself. Don't blow it out here. Because yeah, it will it cost be, you the sure. race. Yeah, I think, yeah. you know, speaking of blowing it out, too, somebody mentioned, you know, what I was sort of like talking about this uh, d- during during the race. And somebody was like, well, you know, she's at a disadvantage because it's a really tough spot for her to blow out any snot rockets because it's such a <laughs> steep climb. So. <laughs> oh. um, other things I noticed about Katie Compton's ride. Do you guys did you notice there was that really bad mud bog right before the barriers? And I don't know if you noticed, but like Voss was dismounting and running that entire mud section up through and then all the way through the barriers and then remounting. And Katie was riding that. She was powering through that all the way up to the barriers before she was dismounting and then running the barriers and then remounting. So she was on her bike quite a bit more uh, than the riders that were around her in that section. The other thing I noticed is, you know, that little there was that one really steep but short rise Yep. That kind of everybody stalled right, right at the right. apex. Yeah, left, so. Even left in the men. Right. Yeah. 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 And if you notice too, Katie was like dismounting at the bottom of that. She wasn't even wasn't even riding it. She was dismounting at the bottom of it, running up it, and then remounting at the top. Rather than trying to ride it, getting stalled right at that at that peak of it. And then kind of there was that weird moment where everyone kind of has to like hop off, but they're hopping off down, downhill, you know, which is always a right. weird motion. And you really basically takes all your momentum away. Um, so I did notice that she was doing that a lot, too. So, um, yeah, I thought those were two things I noticed about the way she was just approaching the course that were a little bit different and, you know, I think really helped her out because I think she was quicker running that little thing than than trying to ride it. So, yeah, I think right, the, anything. Well, I, I was just say I think with Voss, too, when when you saw that where you saw where Compton was running versus Voss having to dismount and ride it, you know, not to be sacrilegious but if 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 uh Voss has has some kryptonite, I really do think it's these heavier more technical tracks Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. that she struggles with more. And of course that's a relative term for her struggling, but that's, that's where Compton and I think also Kant have, have an advantage over and obviously brand. We haven't even talked about brand yet, Uh, (laughs) but the other thing that I think is worth noting about Katie who came into this season so strong, you know, uh, we, we go back to the beginning we're talking about, you know, Mark, leg talking about how her power numbers and everything you know better than ever in her career and then Mm -hmm. you know continually getting sick and still not being able she sort of got the the leg issues worked out but the allergies she still just has not been able to conquer and the only thing that i think is that helps her with that is the change of weather so seeing that we're having snow forecast for Mm -hmm. worlds and it's just everything's going to be frozen i think uh you know there isn't anybody happier than than katie compton 
Right. There's very low probability of allergies, I think, in, in yeah. those conditions. Yeah. You know? But so let's talk about good... Lucinda Brand. Yeah. I mean, if there was one person that I think looked maybe, maybe looked better than Katie Compton, it was Lucinda Brand. Uh, <laughs> just putting power down. She was running like... Uh, I mean, running up that that same little rise that I was just talking about with Katie. I don't know if you saw her. She was like running it kind of like uh, almost like duck waddling up there is all I can think. Of. It looked really weird, but it was really fast. Right. And she was just zipping right up that thing and continuing on. And talk about somebody who has some power in the heavy course. Oh, yeah. I think. Well, that's the, brand you know, we talk about these ridiculous. like road, road racers coming over to cyclocross and all you're hoping is that like their technical skills aren't as good. You see her just like getting low and putting power through those mud sections and th no one could stay with her. And then you got yeah. to that. You know, we talked about that little billy goat section, the the double uh, uh, rutted off camber. And every time through there, I'm like. I don't want to wish anything bad on anybody, but man, Compton, if you just screw that up, Compton could be right there. But I, she, she's just, she was smooth through that every time, you know, she really, yeah. I think she, she's kind of got that full package and is uh, putting it all together at the right time of year. Certainly doesn't let a cyclocross course intimidate her in any way. No. I mean, no. just no, goes for it. So, um, all right. Anything else? The other thing that kind of just hit me is um, Anne-Marie Wurst. Yeah. An yeah, enigma. Just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know she still got third in the World Cup, but um, yeah, I think I think right, wasn't it? Isn't that right? Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, yeah. And yeah, that with that with her not being up there, like a week away from Worlds, I think she was maybe on. And certainly, anything can still happen. I we all get that. But um, uh, yeah, it was a little bit disconcerting not to see her up in that front group, and we haven't seen her up in that front group really. Uh, in the last few races. So yeah. uh, just a little, I think she kind of put a bigger, a little bit bigger question mark on uh, what's going to happen with her coming up. So couple anything other, else? Yeah, a couple yeah. of notes. Uh, well, I, you know, I don't want to steal David Sunder, but his, you know, his his profile or old profile mate, I should say. Uh, yes, Katarina man. Nash getting off of her yeah. uh, Colorado front porch, putting down the red wine and uh, getting 11th <laughs> in, a, in a World Cup. Uh, always yeah. just yeah. amazed at her her oh, her ability man. to do that. At racing age 42 yeah. as well. Let's. I mean, yeah. Uh, she's, no, she's not a youngster either, no, so that's amazing. Um, did you all see Eva Lechner's finish? I did. Speaking of, it kind of reminded me of Nash at Worlds. Yeah, so Eva uh, broke a chain, at probably a oh, quarter, I did see quarter that, yes. of a lap to go. And the thing that I loved <laughs> right. is she she wasn't going to win. She wasn't going to get top 10. No. But no. she sprinted a <laughs> not short finishing straight off of her bike, yeah. pushing her bike to secure 16th place and keep herself in 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 front of 17th. And it was just, I was just super impressed by. It. I mean, it was so yes. pro, and it was so like you you know, even at this level, some riders going to be like, oh, what does it matter if I get 16th or 25th? Let me just walk right, in from right. here. Poor, yep. poor yep. me, my chain broke, you know. But yep. no, nah, I mean, she was Blame just on the mechanic. cruising in. <laughs> And not doing the typical, just like holding the bike by the back of the saddle and trotting in. No. She was hand on the bars, yeah. head down. <laughs> like so here's the question, though: Were you guys, line. were you guys yelling at your at your video device, scooter, scooter? Why aren't you scootering? Or is that just yeah? Me? I wonder if it was an <laughs> incline or yeah. I don't know. Maybe she just thought she was faster. Uh, one. Um, other note right around her in 15th place, the winner of the U23 race was Yara Kostelin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and in second place, go ahead, say it. Well, no, no. Let me just talk about her. We'll get to second okay, place because Sorry. what I wanted to say about Yara is it, she is someone who I think has flown under our radar. I mean, obviously, another Dutch woman. There's so many fast Dutch women out there. It's it's tough to lose track of them. But it, for the French World Cup for Pont Chateau, the woman that went head over heels and then had to fight off the the medic who wanted to pull her off oh, yeah, the track. Yeah, yeah. That's her. Oh. Mm -hmm. So th she was riding with that front group of the elites and had that horrific crash and wasn't able to continue. DNF came back here, 15th overall, 
won the U23 race. Not somebody I think that we were necessarily looking at, but man, oh man, um, I know we're not, uh, well, I don't want to tip my hand, but if I have a dark horse for the U23, I'm tipping my hand. Uh, she is she is <laughs> really, really racing well. And then, yeah, in second place in that U23 race, amazing ride by Clara Hansinger, just out there, looked like she was having fun, finished 19th overall right right behind Faringer, and really, I think, sort of sending a message to that U23 women's field. Here I am. Yeah, see me next week. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. This is all stuff. Yeah, all this stuff. Like I said, that, that I really think makes you makes you bring even a, and I'm interest sorry, to next week. Just to, to finish off that thought. Yeah. So you had Kathleen in first for the U23. You had Clara Hansinger second in the U23, and then you had the woman that I think, at least myself and maybe all of us, thought was basically Unbeatable. already could put on that uh, rainbow jersey was uh, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, but she was in 21st place, third place on the day for the U23 just a week out from Worlds. Right. So it's like, man, It. I mean, she was a, a last week, I think she would have probably been everyone's favorite. And now this for week sure. you might have to go, hmm... I don't know about that. So, yeah, just a great little spin that this race has put on everything, I think, for next for next weekend. Yeah, so, and then, you know, so. right behind them, even uh, Yolanda Neff, who I think everybody, you know, and this happens. You know, you get these riders who come in, somebody different, another sport, whatever, having a great, you know, couple races, definitely showing that they have some skill. And then the UCI is putting her up there as like, oh, look at our new cyclocross star. A, a little a reality check for her. Uh, yep. In yep. a really tough, heavy Race uh, coming in 20 seconds, so it'll be interesting to see if she's actually a, a factor come next week. Yeah. yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Um, okay, anything else we want to talk about the women? Or are we ready to move on to the men's race? I can actually say the men's race. This was actually a race. Yes. Right? Well, I mean, for, for two-thirds of it. <laughs> for two-thirds of it. Yeah, so, all right, let me give the top five. In first place was still Matthew Vanderpool. Second place, Tone Ertz. Third place, Wout Van Aert. Fourth place, Corne Van Kessel. Fifth place, Gianni Vermeersch. Uh, for the U.S., top U.S. rider was Stephen Hyde in 24th. Uh, in 26th place was Curtis White. Great. That's a great spot for Curtis White. Uh, and continuing on for the U.S. in 47th place was Kerry Werner. Uh, 54th place, Anthony Clark. 57 was Cody Kaiser. 59 was Max Juddelson. Uh, 63 was Andrew Giuliano. And in 65 was Tyler Cloutier. Tyler coming off a pretty bad crash and kind of sprained his wrist the day before, too. So, mm. um, all right. Well, what did you guys think of this race? I think just to give our sh- proper respects to our uh, Canadian friends, there is Cameron yeah. Jett in 62nd there. place. There you go. Um, this was the big, the big thing, you know, story going into this race was the uh, overall for the World Cup for the men. It was actually came down to the very last race. Whoever won, but if they finished in the, t- I think above what twentieth spot or something, uh, whoever finished first between Tone and Wout would would be the overall World Cup uh, winner. And Tone basically I, looked to me like Tone from the gun said, uh, "This I'm going to take this. This is going to be mine, <laughs> right? I'm just going out. You're going to have to catch me." And just, I mean, gave it everything he had from the very beginning. What did you guys think? Well, I always, I was kind of wondering the whole time was, is he racing this thing to beat Wout, or is he racing this thing to to beat Vanderpool and win it? And I really, really felt that he was in this thing to win the race overall. And what a race he had! He was so strong. You know, there's a, a lot of talk about his cool paint job on his bike coming up, and um, he, that has he didn't really, ride right. Not, not, no. He's got new paint on it. Did you see how it messy it was? The race. He didn't race it. He didn't race it. Did you see that thing though? That yeah, was, it's, it's very beautiful. Sparkly. Very sparkly. Well done by track. Yeah, oh my yeah, yeah. goodness. Yes. So um, go ahead, David. Yeah, and just he looked good. He looked smooth. I think that at the beginning of the season, we looked at him in Waterloo and thought, wow, you know, because usually in, in Waterloo early season stuff, 
we have that kind of surprise winner and not maybe who you thought it was going to be, but, yeah. you know, they kind of fizzle. Yeah. He has maintained all season long that he belongs at the top of that podium. Yeah. What did you see, Bill? I, I agree with David that he was looking to – that he, he there was definitely a dual-purpose race. He needed to be in front of Wow, but he was also looking to win that race, especially, you know, he looked to be the fastest guy out there for most of the race – uh, and Vanderpool afterwards, you know, said, well, I haven't raced in a while. I've had, mm-hmm. you know, been at this training camp. It, it was just nuts. Cause he's like, yeah, it took me a couple laps really to get my legs back under me and get the feel for cyclocross again. But after that, I felt, I felt pretty confident. I feel confident going into next week. I'm like, oh, great. Okay. Uh, I, I, <laughs> it, what I saw was tone and I, the exact same thing what you were thinking david except i i was talking to my screen after vanderpool caught him mm-hmm. and passed him and started to gap him and you saw tone starting to try to close it down and i'm like dude that's not important don't yeah it's true that's yeah. not important let it go all you need to do is stay in front of wow just let that yeah. go and i was like man don't blow yourself up and then lose the world cup too so i and i i'm sure that he raced as hard as he did but i'm sure he was smart about it as well to make sure that he didn't do something stupid and and lose the the overall uh one one um little thing that I want to uh, as far as this this race between tone and wow what I want I want to throw some some numbers out at you and see what you think about this training plan yeah uh January 24th on Strava Wout van Aert in Spain rode 104 miles with 10,000 feet of climbing Day before that, uh, Wout Van Aert rose 66.18 miles with 5,000 feet of climbing. Uh, three days before that, uh, on um, January 22nd, 92.59 miles with 7,000 feet of climbing. Now, to his, to his credit, he did within there get in a five-mile run also, uh, <laughs> but... Um, doesn't really so take any of the KOMs. That's all I want to know. Doesn't? Oh my God! They're taking the, it's nuts. There's like 24 each one, you know. But uh, did not really. Doesn't doesn't really look like cyclocross training to me, does it? I was gonna say it sounds like someone who's getting ready for spring classics. So, <laughs> so that he came into this race possibly a little flat yep. is not yeah. surprising. Yeah. Now, does this? Does he actually taper? And, uh. And and then make it into next week super strong. Who knows? We'll see. Yes. But right now, I'm guessing right yes. now, it looks <laughs> like uh, I, I will tell you, David, just to answer your question. He only got one trophy for Huger Haida, and it was 10th overall on a lap of the <laughs> World Cup 2019 course. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. So I think, you know, people might look at Vanderpool's ride and be, and see it as a, a chink in his armor. To me, it's more proof that Matthew Vanderpool is, or more strengthens the argument that Matthew Vanderpool is going to win next yeah. this coming weekend. Uh, I think he could come in, not have his best day. He didn't have a lot of problems like he's had in other races, but still... Uh, you know, mentally, this could have been a tougher race for him to wrap his head around, but he stayed calm, did what he had to do, waited for his legs to come, and then takes the overall win. So for me, that actually makes me feel more confident that Matthew Vanderpool is, is probably going to take the win. That being said, I think, like you were talking about, Bill, I think I I think Wout is going to come with something next weekend. I mean, I've picked him the last three years, and I think he's going to come with something. I think he will taper, and I think he'll come in incredibly fast and incredibly strong and, and really maybe be uh, pressure in Vanderpool, but I still think... Uh, th- th- this was a great race for Matthew Vanderpool, even though it's not one of his most spectacular wins. You know, he didn't win it by a minute and a half. Da 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 da. I think it's just evidence that he's matured as a as a racer overall. So I think it was a really good win. David. Um, yes, sir. David. Yeah. Who oh. was the happiest person in the men's elite field? I think it would be Tim Earlier. You got it. Nailed yeah. it. <laughs> 
if I were Tim Merrily, I'd be really happy. I'd be out there yelling for uh, for Tune. Maybe because Tone maybe blocking a little bit in the back. Do you guys want to explain why you you're saying that to our viewers? Sure. In case anybody doesn't know why. So the Belgians being a top three team had six to go to Worlds. They were allowed to send six riders because Wout van Aert is the world champion. He's not included that in that selection. So it's six plus one. And then the winner of the World Cup overall also is not included in that selection as of last week that also was Wout so Wout actually was taking away a spot from Belgium if Tone could take that because if Tone wins the World Cup like he did then he moves outside of that selection as well and then those six that opens up another slot in those six and that was Tim Merrillier who was the uh was sitting on the bench and now got the call to go check into the game yeah, yeah the, the two pretty happy the two, the two extra spots that Belgium ha- Belgium had were both being held by Wout uh, last week, but now, now Tone being the overall World Cup winner, he takes one of those away, so now they can fill that uh, that other spot. So yeah, you're right. I think you're right, David. I think he probably was the happiest one. Yeah. Was he blocking at all? I don't, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other, the other, the other. Uh, um. Race worth mentioning, especially we talked about Eva Lechner's sprint to the end. Did you see the sprint for ninth place? I did not. I did not. Between Mewson and Francis uh, Moray, old man Moray, (laughs) old man Moray in the (laughs) drops. Like, he's about to win a sprint at the Giro. I mean, just clicking through the gears, coming down. And there were, like, four guys who started out. And at about the first 50 meters, they were all like, all right, we're sprinting. And then they were like, whoa. And just saw, like, Moray just, like, pull away from them all out, like, back wheel swinging back and forth. I mean, it was it was awesome. It was awesome. And, and, and he got his top 10. So that was pretty sweet yep, to see. There you go. <laughs> um, the other interesting things uh, or things that make us wonder uh, that happened in this race, not even part of the race, is um, Vanthernout. What's going on? I had some uh, reaction to something he ate, right? Yeah. So food poisoning. Uh, yeah. I think uh, people were, you know, maybe jokingly uh, saying that he was getting down to weight. So um should be even thinner <laughs> yeah. come next right. week. But yeah, That's a big it, thing with him. I know he carries a lot of weight. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Those, yeah. bo- those bones are heavy. Uh, <laughs> so did he get tainted pounds. beef or what would happen? Yeah, I don't know. But that's the... I don't that's know. The, yeah. Um, that's the... Uh, yeah, I think it was uh, Elliot Caldwell was saying how he, you know, you got to stick to the pasta and ketchup. Can't get wrong. Can't it's, go wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. It sounded like it was... It sounded like, you know, it, they basically had it under control. Those, I mean, if it's an allergic reaction, uh, that's something, you know, he can get over fairly quickly. Uh, so it, it almost sounded like he could have raced on Sunday, but just as a precaution, they're like, no, we're going to we're gonna not do it. And I think, I'm, I'm thinking in a week, he, he'll probably be fine and he'll be there. So, um, but still, we didn't get to see him. So it kind of makes you, hmm, what's going to happen with him next weekend? So... All right. Anything else? Anybody wants to mention, or should we go on to our picks? Johnny Vermeer. I just want to mention him. Having an awesome yeah. year. Still continue to. I mean, right up there. You know. You know, that's a really good point, Bill. That is really good. He has had a great year uh, overall. I, yeah, just in the top ten a lot, pushing top five, top five in this race, and uh, we've been saying his name quite a bit this season. Yeah. Yeah. So well done. Well done. Um, all right. Do we want to move on to our picks? Our Let's famous do it. our famous picks. So, all right, we decided uh this season. If you remember last season we or we did not pick junior men's uh podiums, and we decided that we're not going to do that this year either. Why and not? Why are we not going to do that? Bill, you tell us. Well, I I think it's only fair to wait until we have a full allotment of races before we pick those out so there's no sense if we if we're unable to uh separate the women's juniors and and select a podium there let's not even 
select the the men's junior and we'll wait until there's a full full complement of races equal on both sides and then we can make our picks from there so we so are next proudly, year very proudly by the way saying we are we stand for equality in racing there you go yes next year it should all be e- equal uh junior women's field I, it's, it's 2020 right I'm, I'm right on that i think yeah. uh so we'll do that then and um yeah we're gonna we're gonna start with the you let's start with i'm gonna just pick them in the order that they're gonna be raced that's how this order came uh, came about for me so that will start with the uh u23 men which will race on saturday and so we're going to pick our top three podium uh, for the U23 men. And who would like to go first? I think I'll you just have to one. choose. Yeah, David, go. Okay. All right. So David, go. in this one here, um, what's his name? Pitcock's racing U23, right? Correct. Correct. All right. So there it is. Uh, we're getting Eli Ezerbeat is going to be sandwiched by Pitcock in first. And Ben Turner in third place. Okay. So you got Pidcock, Ezerbeat, and yep. Turner. All right. Bill, do you want to go next or do you want me to? I, I mean, I will. That was my podium as well. But let me um, just sort of uh, mix things up here so I'm not... Um... Okay. <laughs> uh... I'll just since I can't I can't go with the paper anymore. I'm gonna put um Gage Hecht in third place. So it's gonna go Pidcock, Ezer Beat, Hecht. Wow. You know when we were talking about doing our just like pick with your heart dark horse who could possibly do it. Hecht was uh, up there. Yeah. All right. So my pick for the U23 men is gonna be first place is gonna be Ezer Beat. Uh, second place I'm gonna pick Turner, and in third place I'm gonna pick Pidcock. A little Pidcock wow. meltdown again. I like Ooh. it. And I also have on a side note, I wrote over here, I have, I have uh, Gage in the top five. Yeah. So, yeah. I are we doing our uh, dark horses now? Or are we saving? Well, we should do them now, right? No, I was, I was thinking dark horses we would just do for the elite, for the elite women oh, okay. and elite men. Okay. Yeah, so, all right. Then I, don't, uh, then, I, then I don't have to pronounce Antoine's last name. <laughs> <laughs> Benoit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So the the final race on Saturday is going to be the elite women. Probably the it's the highlight of the day for many people. Um, and I will p- I'll pick this one first. All right. I know this is a tough one to pick. Like we've been talking about all season. We've been talking about for maybe the last month that that the women's world uh, field is huge. And how do you pick? Um, is it what you pick is very difficult. So I'm sticking with my top three is going to be Mariana Voss. I'm going to take Lucinda Brand second and Sonic Hunt third. There we go. All right. <laughs> Dave, uh, David, you go next. All right. This one here in the, the surprise. You just steal my order again. Everyone. <laughs> Katie Compton <laughs> takes the top step. Oh, my goodness. Yep. In a battle against Kant and Voss, Kant takes second, Mariana Voss in third. Wow. Wow. A missed shift late in the final lap (laughs) cost Voss the entire... dropped chain cost Voss (laughs) again. Indeed. Indeed. (laughs) All right, Bill. I also was just going to go with the, with the, 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 the underdog... Although is she really an underdog, and say this was going to be the year for Katie Compton to take the win, I'm sticking with it. Yeah, you got it. Right. I'm you got sticking it. with it. I got Lucinda Brand in second, Mariana Voss in third. Wow. All right. Now we were each going to pick a dark horse, and by dark horse, how we're defining dark horse for all the viewers is just somebody that is not on our podium now. Not on our top, not in our top three pick. It could be the person who you would have picked for fourth in your podium, or it could just be someone who you think, man, if they have a perfect day, weird stuff happens, like can often happen in cyclocross and especially at Worlds. Uh, this person could just pull, do something special and pull something out. So, uh, Bill, since you went last, why don't you go first with the dark horse? I I think that the the you know for my picks definitely Sane Kant could have been up there as well you know it's sort of don't want to forget about her she's you know a a a great champion who has shown that she can win that 
However, the name that has come up a ton this year, who oh, is still not gonna pick my pick on the move up, and I am picking David's pick oh. of Denise Betsema. Denise oh. Betsema, she was my pick. <laughs> David and I basically were just like we're 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 in the in step today. Dude, we you are. guys called each other last night when you made these picks, didn't you? <laughs> I think if we had called each other last night, we would have decided to pick different ones. <laughs> That's probably true, too. <laughs> All right, David, are you going to go with Betsima as well? Oh, It's fine. You can it, pick can I? I mean, it's, Yeah, Of course. I mean, of course, my heart's still, of course, always with Katarina Nash. But yeah. Betsima is the one that if, if the cards fall where they, where they may, uh, she yeah. will be there. Nice. Uh, my dark horse pick. Of course, um, as you know, is, I was the only one of us that didn't have Compton in the top three on the podium. But believe me, no one would love to see that more than me. Um, but my dark horse pick is not Katie Compton either. My dark horse pick is going to be Lois Sells. Good one. Mm. Good one. There you go. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I think that's that's pretty strong, guys. Let's um. So that will complete the day for Saturday at Worlds, and then we'll move on to Sunday. Sunday starts out with the U twenty three women. Um, again, really tough one to pick. Um, let's go. I don't. I don't think I've gone first yet, have I? So I will go first uh, on this one. My first pick for the U twenty three women is going to be Alvarado. Uh, I think she's still going to get it done. Um, I think uh, I'm going to pick Floor. Um, Nagengast for second place, uh, and then I'm gonna go with uh, the 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 young lady that you mentioned, Bill um, Castel Casteling, uh, for third. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Surprise pick. Boom. <laughs> uh, Bill, you're second this time. All right. Uh, I'm I'm pretty much this is gonna be um, kind of boring after you went, but I'm also gonna pick <laughs> Alvarado for the win. And I'm gonna move Clara Hansiger up there and there into second place, mm-hmm. and nice. then uh, and then I'm putting uh, Castellan in in third place. She's uh, I I just think that she is she is flying right now, so she's gonna be up All there. All right, nice, David. You're gonna I, be the, you're gonna mix it up here, right? Uh, yeah, I wish I were. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking Alvarado is gonna win this, okay. then Hansinger, and. I don't know who's going to take third place. I'd love you to see it be Katie Close, but I'm mean, thinking more <laughs> it's Noggin, Noggin Gust. All right. Floor Noggin Gust, third place. All right. Cool. Wouldn't it be cool to see a women's... Uh, never mind. Just forget about this. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> eh, okay. Parody would be uh, such a good thing. I'd love to see parody. The final race of the day on Sunday is, of course, the elite men's race. Uh... I think there's pretty much three riders who are <laughs> pretty strong for the for the podium. I'm a, I'm gonna guess that we will each have some variation of these three. But whose turn is it to go first? I David? don't think I've gone first yet. No, okay, Bill, you Bill. go first. Bill, you go first. Uh, okay, I'm gonna say that Matthew Vanderpool wins. I, I know that uh, that um, uh, Scott's gonna go with Wild again for the. 18th year in a row. <laughs> uh, but uh yeah, Vanderpool and, and correctly I might remind yeah, you. Yeah. Now here's here's <laughs> where here's where it always gets a little hard and we saw this both with Vanderpool and also with Wout is second place for both of those guys d- doesn't mean anything at all. I think Tone Ayers is still in a position that second place means a lot uh yeah because he hasn't been there yet uh that being said i'm putting wout in second place and tone in third <laughs> okay <laughs> uh david you want to go sure uh i see this happening a little differently this year all right two and Ertz wins what two and Ertz wins <laughs> um and i i i struggle with that because as much as it'd be Pretty straightforward to say Matthew Vanderpool has been winning races going away by minutes all year long. Walt Van Aert, you can't how how do you pick against him as a multi time right. jersey wearer? But Toon Aert has looked so good and he's got something to prove after what happened yesterday. Okay. All right. And second place. I mean, I think that second place and kind of 
is this year's um uh what do you think the Ronde von Flandern winner, Walt Van Aert. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And then in third place, Mr. Vanderpool. All right. And that's not David. That is Matthew Vanderpool. You weren't going to pick Lars Vanderhaar. Uh, he's my dark horse. <laughs> <laughs> I got to, man. Of course. All and, right. You know, so it's not, it's not <laughs> on the, out of the realm of possibility, though. I mean... <laughs> Uh, I, all right. Yeah. For okay. my pick, top three. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, this is the year, Bill. I've been saying it. I'm gonna pick Matthew Vanderpool. I think he is Whoa. a better Stop writer than he has ever been. Presses. <laughs> I think he's a better writer than he's ever been going into Worlds. Uh, I think he's he's. The, whereas last year and the year before, I I thought there was bigger uh, gaps in his. In his uh, skills, and not his skills, but his his completeness as a rider, I think he's tightened those all up this year. I think he's got he's the full package now. He's he's the the modern equivalent of Sven Nice, right? And uh, I think he's gonna he's gonna get the win. Um, I, I just don't see anybody beating him. That being said, I'm picking Wout Van Aert for second because I totally agree with you, Bill. Like you said, it's hard to pick when that's not really something he's going to be that interested in winning what i think will may happen is we will see a closer battle between vanderpool and wout van Aert. i think wout is going to come in fast he is going to be able to maybe push vanderpool a little bit and at least try and attack him at least try and attack trying to close down a gap or something if vanderpool has it and i think those two are actually going to create some separation between themselves and tone Aert, who i'm going to pick for third um, and that's and and even though Wout won't be able to beat Vanderpool, I think he's gonna he's gonna have enough of a, a gap back to third place that he's still gonna take second place. So Matthew Vanderpool, Wout Van Aert, Tone Aert, same as you, Bill. So there we go. All who's right, your, dark who, horses. Yeah, Bill, go ahead. Okay, he, he, I, I am like always torn on this one because I'm like, well, is Michael Van Torn out really a dark horse? But I'm um, I'm picking yeah, him. I was thinking him horse. too. Yeah. Yeah. But here here <laughs> is that your pick too, David, because that's my pick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well there we go. <laughs> okay. That right, was good. easy. There we go. Uh, here 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 is my my question for you all. When you think about Michael Van Torn out, don't you think mm-hmm. of him as like this kid? I, I, yeah. I think of him as like this twenty year old kid. <laughs> he is two years older than Vanderpool and Van Eric. It's crazy. He's like it's 26. <laughs> right. I don't know. I, I know it just means that I'm getting older, but I just look at these yeah. guys now and I think like, oh, it, you know, we, we were before before the, the youth movement, before the Vanderpols and the Van Aerts and the Lawrence Swick all sort of skipped over U23 and came right to the elites. You know, we were looking at Lars Vanderhaar as sort of the... The, the the vanguard of of that and moving in there and skipping his last years of eligibility in U23s and moving up and just uh, crushing souls in the elite fields. He's now 28. Mm. He's getting yeah. old. Right. He's at his peak. Sure. He's at his peak cycling age. <laughs> he is. He is. That's, yeah, that's why he could win it all in the right circumstances. Yeah. Um, all right. So just for fun, guys, I want to look back at last year. And right. see, just I'm not gonna go through the whole podium, right? I just want to see who we picked as winners last year. Hey, you David, guys ready for this? David, yeah, I'm is listening. it is it is it fun for you? I mean, I know it's gonna be fun for Scott. <laughs> yeah, it's gloating. <laughs> okay, just and you I'm and just I both checking th- you and I both in. agreed that we lost conveniently <laughs> lost our picks from last year. <laughs> Scott's like, just hey, so I proud. Got this new, He's gloating. This new little new little feature we can do. We can look at last year's picks too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I got them all right. No. <laughs> No, but there is a couple of interesting things that I think are going to be fun to talk about. Now, so, who's you, hovering in the? Uh, I'm going to go back to look at my Skype thing here. Who's hovering all knowingly? <laughs> <laughs> so, for you, twenty-three women across the board, all three of us picked anybody. Evie Richards. We all picked Evie Richards correctly. Good and pick. That was, <laughs> yeah, that was that was a solid pick right there. For the U twenty-three men, you guys both picked Pidcock, uh, mm. and I picked Ezerbeat. Yeah, um, the pig and we had meltdown. a lot of Yen, yeah. We all had Jens Decker in there too. Yeah, yeah. Man, I hope he gets back. He's riding again. <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I just yeah. Hope Here's the to... interesting thing: for the elite women in first place last year, just like this year, 
you guys both picked Katie Compton. Yeah. <laughs> we were close. We were no, I'm a, not saying. We were only off by a year. <laughs> no, I love it. I love the pick, and I think it's great. And it's awesome that you, you guys picked that last year. I picked Kasani Kant last year. Uh, and then for the elite, we- uh, elite men, um, David and I both picked Walt Van Aert, and Bill, you picked uh, Matthew Vanderpool. And you picked Walt for a second, so it wasn't yeah. like, you yeah. know, and that was, I mean, you could go either, you know, last year either way with those two. So, yeah, just kind of, kind of interesting. I thought so you guys, I, I would say that uh, Katie Compton, David, you were, were you were pretty much, I mean, I know Scott likes to say he got everything right, but you were just one off. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> he picked, he picked Pidcock too. I picked, oh, okay, two off. Never mind, David. Yeah. You don't get any credit. Scott's still oh, champion. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Don't, don't, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Walking that back. <laughs> Walking yeah. that back. Hey, uh, hey, you guys, there was a time when I think all of us were um, fans of road cycling at one time or another in our long yes. lives. Um, yes. There was a guy that raced out of Texas that was, um, he, he won a bunch of races. Let's just put it that way, okay? Whether or not he actually uh-huh. won the races, who knows? But let's say he, he had this uh, technique. Hypothetically. Yeah, yeah. He had this technique whereby he would kind of play cat and mouse. You know, there's that famous uh, race against the German, and uh, he looked back, and he had been pretending he was tired the entire Uh day when, in fact, he wasn't. Uh So what do you think? Now let's look back at Walt Van Aert. What do you think? He spent the entire season getting, (laughs) softening up (laughs) Matthew Vanderpool. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I look. I, I, if yeah, he wins, genius. I will not be surprised. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I agree. He, I think that 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 men's podium. It's 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 some variation of those three. I think it's it's hard to see anyone pass them. But so yeah, go ahead, Bill. Yeah, no, I was just saying I love Wow it's racing. I I think he's had one of the best cyclocross careers and I could I could see him doing it again but man I just watching him these last couple of weeks I don't see it but I I also knowing you know what we we're talking about before all the miles he's putting in his legs if he just needs that weak taper then yeah yeah, yeah. Here, here's yeah. my question for you guys I actually uh went on the <clears throat> slow ride podcast Ooh. last night yeah and and did what's a little, that uh, it's one you should check out. It's on the Wide Angle Podium Podcast oh. Network. We had a little cyclocross yeah. talk with those guys. Uh, Coach Tim was coming home from a pond hockey tournament in Wisconsin and was able, not able to. Which looked amazing. The which, pictures yeah. looked amazing, by the way. So yeah, he wasn't but... wasn't able to phone in. So I, I, I took his place. So you could and phone it in. I did phone it in. <laughs> I, I didn't hold a candle to what uh, the super rookie does, but I, I tried my best. But he, here was the, the question that I posed to them without – Niels Albert any longer in Wout Van Aert's camp. I mean, he's with the Powell's Solzen team, and then Wout's just kind of off on his own. W- will there be any any green tire equivalent? Oh, that's a good question. I I I, I would guess no. I think those came from from Niels. Those were his kind of. Personal stash from his basement. Yeah, his his way to kind of psychologically give Wout a boost, kind of thing. And um, I don't think I don't think they'll be there this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, uh, really what do them. you think, David? I, I'm not sure that he needs them anymore. Yeah, he might. Yeah, true, absolutely. I mean, he's three time mm-hmm. world champion. Maybe he doesn't need them. What do you think, Bill? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think that that we're going to see any any kind of special special tires. It'll be uh, icy, but I think that it's going to be. It's such a you know we looked at it before, and I know there are a couple changes, but it's such a such a mixed race in that there's those you know, super scary drops off of those off cambers, and then there's a lot of just kind of flat pedaly spots. Yeah, you know mm-hmm, it's yeah. it's like it's it's kind of two different races stuck into one, but I I, I think it's going to be a mess. Do you think it's muddy? You mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it may. Yeah. It well, may I think be... they're predicting one degree Celsius, so that's yeah, that's right over freezing. Right? Yeah, and and so some snow, so there'll be some some moisture, and it's you know it's it's right on the <laughs> right on the water, so it's always right. wet. literally on the water. On the water. <laughs> yeah, right. some parts yeah. some parts possibly in the in in, in the, the water. water. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, well, as always, it's going to be amazing. Bill, you'll be there. You'll have the full yeah. story for us when I you gotta, get back. Yeah, I, and you know, I know we are right up on a minute. A couple of things I think we would be uh, remiss not to mention. Uh, going to have an article up later today, most likely on the. It's a little. It's a little older, uh, but just the controversy that went down. You know, in the U.S., we had our controversy over the women's U23 selection. Uh, Great Britain, right. the British British Cycling had a similar one in that they combined all of their U23 races with the elite races for national championships, and therefore didn't give out jerseys for the U23s because under the UCI rule they weren't separate, and that that raised a lot of ire. Uh, Elliot Caldwell, one of the contributors for CXHarris.com, did a great article on that, but then it just kind of got lost in there and we never put it up. But now that uh, GB has announced their team, I think it's, it becomes relevant again because interesting, you know, we, we dissected to the microcosm, the selection for <laughs> the U.S. team and where they did not fill the whole selection and where they did it's really interesting what 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 the brits did so elite women they're sending just three nikki bramier yeah. beth crumpton and helen wyman for the elite men one ian field one. the only choice for for great britain for the men under 23 women which is a strong uh, area for them you know you don't well Evie Richards isn't racing. She probably would have raced elite this year, yeah. still U23 yeah, true, age. True. But you have Anna Flynn, Harriet Harnan, who we all know, Anna Kay, who's had an amazing year, Maddie Wadsworth. So that's a really strong team of four. I believe they had five, so they left one down. Mm -hmm. uh, and then where they did fill out their entire roster was for the U23 men. Cameron Mason, Thomas Main, Tom Pidcock, Dan Tullett, Ben Turner. We talk about metal capable. That's that's kind of that whole field. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. that's, those are all good picks under the Jewish <laughs> junior men. They got uh, five picks as well: Lewis Askey, Oliver Drafen, Rory McGuire, Ben Tullett, and Simon Wiley. But definitely leaving leaving some some riders at home, you know, and that's, uh, yeah. I'm sure something that is going to be discussed in, in those circles, but I thought was uh, worth, worth mentioning before we actually get to worlds. Was there yeah, any sure. talk about that? Did you see any discussion around it or nothing? I haven't yet. I just, all I, all I saw was the, um, uh, press release from British cycling. That's okay. What it's a it's a little weird the elite women's field right now there's 42 uh entries for the elite men's field there's 70 interesting where 70? did for worlds yeah yeah for well actually 61 i'm sorry there were 70 f for the u23 men i wonder when it's final do you think that's final yeah i don't know it's it's if you go to the uci page uh yeah it's the PDFs that you get for for who's currently. I don't know if it's sure. currently entered and it and it's updates um, or if this is finalized. So, but I mean we're only four days out. It's probably yeah. close to final. <laughs> so I don't know. It's just a little weird that I mean all season long we've been seeing huge women's fields, right? Bigger right. than the men's, right? And uh, and then this is the opposite. So, yeah. anyways. All right, Bill, if people want to get in touch with you, uh, social media, or if they want to watch stuff that you're tweeting or whatever from Worlds, how do they do that? Uh, best way would be uh, CX Hairs, that's C-X-H-A-I-R-S -C on Instagram, also on Twitter. I think I may have lost my Twitter login um, credentials again, but <laughs> Instagram is a good one. Also on CXHairs.com, we're going to have a ton of stuff up from Worlds. Also, you know, even now getting getting lots of uh, photo galleries and articles up from, from the World Cups, and that'll... That'll continue, and then I will be posting videos from Worlds up on Cyclocross Television. You can get there by going to cyclocrosstelevision.com or youtube.com slash cxhairs. And if you want to yell at us, do it at feedback at cxhairs.com. We love it when you yell at us. We do. David. Yes, sir. Oh, where can people get in touch with <laughs> you? They can get in touch with me at Mr. David Palin on the Instagram on the uh, Twitter and make sure to go over to Bike Shop CX and check out that contest. You're going to want to get in on that coffee. Absolutely. Or as you, you say there, Bill, coffee. 
Coffee. <laughs> and you can get in touch with me, Scott Diedenbach, at Bike Shop CX on both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and you can send us email to the Bike Shop CX podcast at Bike Shop Show at gmail.com, part of the Wide Angle Podium. All right, guys, um, we will see you uh, talk again post-Worlds and see how well uh, we all did with our picks. Do we, we have to grovel to you again next week, huh? I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. I really do. Hey, maybe we should put something on the year. line here, huh? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> what do you think this is, Belgium? Oh, it's a good point. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.